Bryce Case Jr. In the flesh. <laughs> so we're doing a quick warm up before we do our episode and we're going to go over some of the stuff in there. But dude, hackers. Hackers. I love. So we do an EDC pocket dump. I don't know. Every other show or something. But we had Ryan Montgomery here and that dude had just a whole different type of everyday carry and it's just fascinating what you guys got so if you don't mind i'd love to see some of the stuff you carry is a every day is a hacker uh well i have the the flipper without the attachment that uh, i think ryan uh showcased on this show obviously this device has a ton of different wireless functionality, but it's uh, and infrared. It's mainly a, a, a toy, though. I think a, a lot of it is geared that way as well. Uh, you can extend it and make it a little bit more robust, I suppose. But for the most part, it's uh, it's just for funsies. Um, a lot of the the stock firmware and stuff that's available for it is a little bit dumbed down, but hackers have gone ahead and rejiggered the firmware and uh, sort of extended a lot of the capabilities of this device out of the box and there's a ton of things even Ryan contributed to uh, for his Lamborghini for instance I think his remote open I think he contributed to the repository but uh, yeah there's a obviously a wealth of fun you can have with that uh, the more uh, adult version of the flipper is this the Proxmark what do you mean adult version? Well, this is the one that I think a lot of more serious penetration testers probably employ when they're doing any kind of near-field communication, uh, modification, anything like with 125 kilohertz or 1356 uh, smart card type or uh, near-field communication type stuff. So, you know, hotel keys, apartment fobs. Uh, this will you know, scan passports. Uh, your that'll scan passports. Yeah, should I demo that? Actually, that's probably something we should we could do. We'll I do it on the show. Okay, um, we we could buy blur out all my information. Um, but uh, yeah, I might have to. I might have to set that up. Uh, the uh, also another thing that's in every toolkit is the uh, Hack RF with the. This has a porta pack on it. Um, I probably, should I? That's what I'm saying I should probably like power these up at least so you can kind of see what's going on. It's all there. good. We'll yeah. power them up during the episode. Sounds what good. What does that do? So this is a software-defined radio. Uh, what that means is you can basically th these have bands that they operate on. You know, pretty much the electromagnetic spectrum, the whole the whole wave. But I mean, anything from FM, AM radio to you know, your 900 megahertz public band, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, stuff that wireless communications runs off Bluetooth. Uh, but this allows you to analyze, receive, and transmit. Uh, I think that Ryan had showed uh, the ADSB, like airport or airplane communications, uh, show, you know, call signs and uh, the distance and stuff. But uh, again, this is just, if you think about it, just like a radio would accept that pretty much all wireless communication is is radio. So so anything that's a wireless communication, which is pretty much everything today, you can intercept it with that thing. Correct. So you have uh, like P twenty five is a coded trunk radio that like the police use that's encoded, and so if you have the uh, the keys, you know, if you're able to dump the keys off of, like, let's an Astro Saber or something that, you know, what the police using or, you know, what we probably use in the military, uh, that you could use those keys to decrypt traffic that's on that network. Uh, so again, pretty much for everything. So a police scanner, but, um, futuristic, uh, I guess, uh, this is a obelisk one phone. Um, it's actually employed. They have a contract with NSA and it's an Android phone, but it's completely hardened, uh, meaning that the internals and everything have been modified to where <laughs> hackers, where nation state hackers and stuff have a lot harder time you know, getting into these things. So I don't know if you've heard of the Pegasus mm -mm. spyware. Um, so there's a group called the NSO group. They're an Israeli security group and they develop uh, malware for iPhones and Androids that uh, allows people to spy on them. And so the Jamal Khashoggi, the um, 
the uh, reporter who got who got killed. Um, that was a Pegasus op. Uh, they target usually you know journalists, diplomats, politicians, uh, and what it is is it gains persistence on your phone. And you basically have somebody that can read all your conversations and kind of do anything with your phone. So these phones are designed specifically to try to make them as anti-hackable as humanly possible. Uh, How do I get one of these? Uh, my buddy, uh, he makes them. They're, it's called Obsidian Intelligence Group. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, yeah, they're based off of the OnePlus uh, phone. But they run an entire uh, suite of kind of hacker software. There's a software-defined radio attachment that can go on this phone. Uh, so you can kind of do the same, a little bit junior version, but the same type of thing you can do with a device like this. Uh, it also runs a full suite of like penetration testing and network testing. Yeah, <laughs> the penetration testing and network testing software. Uh, so... You could basically have a, your your phone, you know, be a complete hack station the same way that your your PC would be. This is your buddy that makes these. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a character. <laughs> he's he's uh he's probably about to sell about a hundred thousand of these phones well, after this goes I, out. I, they're a little pricey, but uh, yeah, I said it's it's worth it. I use it internationally because one of the advantages to it is the. The backhaul is all like no matter what cell tower you're on, it's all encrypted traffic, and it goes uh, it basically it works anywhere in the world. And so when I'm traveling internationally, I usually use it for a hotspot, and I can tunnel all my traffic through it, and it's just as good as a VPN. But it also has a static IP address, so um, that means that it, the IP address never changes. So I, it's predictable and deterministic. So I know if I I can connect to this machine, like if I open it up and, and uh, you know, so if I want to ingress any traffic to the device, then I know exactly like where it's going to be and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, again, I said just internationally, it's been a godsend just because you know you're not having to switch out SIMs and everything like that all the what time. What is the, what does that cost? I think thirty five hundred is the list price for the phone, um, but uh, there's a new operating system that he just released. Um, that uh, I'm trying to think of all the features that it has. I, again, I, I know that it's in use by. I think they're using it in Ukraine right now for uh, uh, SDR cap, the software defined radio captures. Uh, but yeah, so his client list is pretty eclectic but i said people like myself that aren't really you know we don't i guess i have a threat profile but you know it's usually people again that are in danger of you know i said journalists would be a good one or yeah you know, there you go right Sean here ryan uh yeah yeah there you go you're the target audience i'm assuming um this here uh this is a, a an oem uh apple charging cable that uh you know you get with your iphone uh, and then this is a cable that my buddy manufactures called the OMG cable. His name is Mike Grover, but uh, they look identical. Uh, so you can inspect them, you know, pretty much scrutinize them as much as humanly possible, and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these two. But functionally, this charges uh, devices, but, you know, in the tip here is basically a fully fledged computer with wireless capability that you can use if you just gave this to somebody and said can I charge my phone or charge my um, airpods or whatever then using this device you could plug it into the side of a computer and uh, it would basically it acts as a, a keyboard a human interface device and you can m manipulate this to download payloads to the machine that this is plugged into. You can just basically control anything. It's just like being sitting at the computer, but you can do it remotely from your phone. And it has a ton of other neat features too, like geofencing to where it'll only activate itself if it's within range of certain networks. Uh, so it's a good covert manipulation tool. Use it in red team operations, uh, which is, they're more like physical pen tests. Like when you walk into a data center or a business, say a bank, and, uh, you know, the groups will, it comes from the military, actually, the red team, blue team stuff, but the uh, red teaming is the act of, uh, usually you're employed by the company, sort of like the movie sneakers, to go in there and test the vulnerabilities of the, yeah. of the uh, system. 
Red cell operations. Red cell operations. <laughs> yeah. So that cable, you plug that in. You plug that into a phone and charge it, or a laptop, or whatever you put that into, and you basically have full access to the entire everything. Yeah, and exactly. can control it. It's exactly as if you were sitting at the machine itself. Should I demo it on the computer here? Or let's demo it. Demo? Let's demo it on the show. On the show. Yeah, I had to mark it with this little yellow thing or the orange thing, so I knew that uh, <laughs> this is this is the bad one, the evil cable. Yeah, I, t I took a look at those, and they, dude, you cannot. Yeah. There's no difference. It's amazing. I mean, there is a difference, but you can't tell it visually. Well, the and that's uh, I said the NSA developed these cables uh, quite a few years ago, but it was in I believe it was Snowden's leaks that that, that that's where this came to light. Uh, but these cables ran the taxpayers twenty thousand dollars a piece, uh, but that's under two hundred dollars the cables. There's different. Uh, Devices that he manufactures. Have you ever seen the big hit? Do you remember that movie? No. Oh, there was this this whole sequence in there where they talk about the trace buster and the trace buster buster and the trace buster buster. But um, that every you know the, the kind of Newton's laws of things. Every action requires an equal and opposite reaction. The uh, that they also manufacture these devices, which d detect their malicious cable detectors. So. Should you run up on, you know, you, you you serve the problem and then you also serve the cure in a sense. And so these devices here will basically detect if one of these is plugged into your system. And Holy so you sort of, cow. it's kind of a condom. You can run it through and then make sure that, uh, yeah, that whatever plug you're plugging in isn't, isn't bad. So for the ultra paranoid among us. Uh, Safe yeah. penetration only, right? Exactly. <laughs> Safe computer sex always. Uh, but yeah, it's does that one. does that cover it? That can do it. That's yeah, the yeah. daily carry. That is. What do you use the most? Probably the flipper, just uh, the utilitarian part of it. Uh, m most of these things are just sp specific. You know, obviously, if I'm on a, an engagement, you know, physical engagement, then you know the, the cables are something that I would be using. Uh, but and to do wireless site surveys and stuff, I'd use the the hack RF. Um, but yeah, the the flipper, just because it has the IR, the near field communication, the smart card, the, the um, you know, just the, and it's cute. I think is the only reason I I probably carry this a lot around in my pocket what, a lot more. What is that thing actually made for? The, the flipper? flipper? I mean, it is a it's a wireless penetration testing tool, and it was marketed initially to the computer security community. Uh, it was a, a kickstarted project, I'm pretty sure, and. Um, I said I had like one of the first runs of it, but uh, yeah, it's it's designed and it's gamified. It's cute. The, you know, there's a picture of a dolphin that's always talking. It's kind of like a Tamagotchi, uh, those little toys. Yeah. So it's just very, it's, it, it's a fun kind of, kind of tool that does all these, uh, just an all-in-one kind of tool. But, the, you know, just like once you sort of, spread out in utility you know you kind of go wide and not deep that's part of the the issue with it is that it, for the the heavy more heavy lifting um you know obviously you want kind of more of a specialized tool for whatever the job is can you buy all this stuff just on the open market all of this stuff is off the shelf i think the phone is that there is a little bit of uh vetting that uh Brian likes to do to make sure that it's uh that you know you're because depending on who's getting a hold of it like if they try to reverse engineer it or whatever it cre increases the tax service but I everything else I think is pretty much yeah just you can get it off the shelf if you know where to look man there's two there's two interviews I just that I want to do now just off your ADC pocket dump one's the guy that invented that phone and the other guy's the other one is the guy that invented that cable the, I said the guy that invented the phone <laughs> he's He's in Bali right now, and I don't know if he's going to come back to the U.S. Uh, I don't blame him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's having a real good time over there. The guy that made the cable is, uh, he actually, uh, he was actually a member of my forum as well, um, the same one that Ryan was a part of. And 
He was in information technology, had no desire to get into computer security. And then uh, just after kind of interacting with everybody on, on my board, then he started to really get into hacking and stuff. And now he's made this insane name for himself, uh, you know, in the information security community, developing those. But it's crazy because he started out and he was basically fixing printers and all that, that type of work. And then he just got infatuated with this. And now he's making this killer, killer stuff. Good for him, man. Super proud. He's of got him. more, more products. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he, they're all kind of in the same van. I say he, he manufactures the, um, the, the detectors. He has ones that are more, this actually the flipper does this too, where if you plug the flipper into a computer, you can also send keyboard payload, keyboard payloads the same way as you can with this. But this it's the inconspicuous kind of nature of these cables that makes it a lot more yeah uh, attractive uh, but yeah he also makes implants that do similar things um uh, but yeah it's, this is pretty much the series that he's known for have you have you have you guys done penetration testing on that phone on this one on the phone itself yeah 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 like it's th- there's a lot of basically how it's locked down just from a, from a network level. There's obviously when you are an administrator, the human element of all hacking is the stupid part. That's the weakest link in the chain. And so there are obviously things that you could do to screw up the phone. You know, you could, you could run malware as an administrator and then basically screw it up. But there's, segmented execution so there's a user land and then kind of an administrator land uh in the in the phone itself and so it's it's segmented so one shall not meet the other type thing uh but yeah that the the phone itself said so there obviously the operator error is going to be the <laughs> largest kind of i guess barrier to to security uh but just as it's uh, hardened because the, so the network is it's completely locked down like just to say typical firewall type stuff application level uh, like uh, like execution permissions and stuff so it makes it a little bit said so it's it's not impossible nothing is impossible to have mm-hmm. but yeah it's just it's just very very hardened more so than you would get with like an off the shelf Android or iPhone. What would be harder to hack just off the shelf, an Android, an Android or an iPhone? Personally, I find that iPhones, because Apple tends to have a, the supply chain figured out end to end, where they make the software specifically, iOS runs on Apple hardware. And so there's a lot more uh, customization. I mean, Apple's just really good about that kind of and and controlling things. And you know, back in the day with Windows and uh, Mac OS, it was the same type of thing. That Windows needs to run on a variety of different hardware because manufacturers are putting in you know different chipsets. Some of them are all is very similar. There are some there's some similarity between the uh, the types of components that computers are using. But with Android, you have so many different manufacturers that are you know, Samsung, Huawei, uh, LG, you know, so all these different manufacturers sometimes aren't using the same internals. And so the operating system has to work with all those types of things. And, you know, you'll find now there's operating systems that live inside of the chips themselves. Like, for instance, the the wireless radio that configures Bluetooth and 802.11 Wi-Fi and all that is it has like a mini operating system and firmware of all of its own. And so sometimes those components even in them wind up having vulnerabilities. And so you might be able to attack the wireless chip. And then if you can get you can bridge it over to the CPU somehow, then, you know, you're able to take control of the, of the device itself. Uh, Pegasus, um, the malware that I was talking about earlier, <clears throat> they uh, they specialize in finding bugs in Apple. There was one that they surfaced in the latest release of Apple, not the, the newest one they patched against it, but there's always these kind of sandbox escapes that are going to exist because software runs in a system context. Some of it does. And so the biggest... Uh, the biggest threat is what's called zero click exploits, which is where you don't have to do anything. Like somebody, I can just send an image to your phone, and then when your phone tries to process that image, render it somehow, then it will basically exploit the 
the the phone itself. Um, so you, with no interaction. So all I'd have to know is your phone number, and then I could send you this message. Uh, so that's where the danger kind of comes in these zero click exploits and stuff. But generally, Apple's really really good about patching those when they find them in the wild. Uh, but meanwhile, Android has all sorts of different versions and. Uh, you know, you different hardware, and so it's a little bit harder to maintain the ecosystem. Just as your attack surface is larger. Makes sense. <clears throat> so you used to be a black hat hacker. Uh, well, yes, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's probably the best way to put it. Gray hat is more of the, I said, appropriate term. I think that there's a, there's a spectrum of the grayscale <laughs> spectrum. Uh, <laughs> what shade of gray are you? Dark gray. <laughs> I I was I was pretty dark gray for a while, uh, but there's just these uh, there's these it's honor among thieves. These principles, I believe that everyone in my group pretty much adhered to. And again, you don't mess with children. You don't mess with old people. And also, like uh, the more. There was a strong no snitching policy, kind of like the mafia. And uh, I think I was explaining this at at dinner, but that there is also this component called swatting, um, which uh, is something that we never did. Uh, but yeah, that you a man's got to have a code, I guess is the is the big thing. And so there are certain actions, obviously, that I wasn't really keen on taking. Um, and the way that hacking has evolved now, it's a little bit different. It's higher stakes. There's a lot more kind of human element impact that is really, you can really mess people's lives up if uh, if you're not careful. And, and so that's, like, I, I wasn't into credit card fraud. Uh, you know, again, that's one of those kinds of gray areas. You know, people, will, you could make the assertion that, credit card companies have insurance and they'll, you know, you can charge it off or whatever, but it's still the hassle. I mean, if you, I don't know if you've ever had to argue with your credit card company about <laughs> identity theft, but yeah, it takes time out of your day and time is valuable and that's time you could be living. So, uh, yeah, I, I would say just the older you get, my friend Denoise has this saying, uh, kind of appropriated from the dark night, but you either die a black hat or you live long enough to become an AppSec engineer. And largely a lot of us that were really, really on kind of that side of the law have all matured. And now we just have a lot of fun keeping kids like ourselves out of the, <laughs> out of the systems. And, you know, they'll surprise and impress us every once in a while, but it's just the natural evolution of things, I believe. Yeah. That's cool, man. Well, the reason I was asking was, you have to have some enemies out there if you were uh, dabbling towards the black hat side. So, what do you do? You carry anything to protect yourself on a daily basis? Uh, I, I used to carry a gun, <laughs> like just uh, for whatever, uh, but not so much. Like I, I also I have. There's crazy people in everybody's life, I think, and I haven't really had. Uh, I mean, I weird stalkers. There's been all manners of things and. The, Hold on. What what kind of gun did you carry? Uh, the XDM forty. Right on. Yeah. Why did you start carrying that? Uh, well, I had an identity crisis as a teenager where I was a little bit of a gangster too, and just. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was this for offense or defense? Uh, the, the back then it was probably more a little bit of both, but yeah, now it, it was more yeah d defensive. I don't think that. I'm very pro gun. I'm very, uh, yeah. I think that you know. I think an armed populace is a is a smart populace. You know, and I'm that. You know, you're. I think that the it's the there's a reality of the world, and then there's this utopian kind of fantasy that we live in and stuff. And you know, it's the same thing with computers. Like there's guys that apply this knowledge for, you know, good. Uh, there's people that, you know, eventually grow up and kind of do these things, but it's the same thing out there. Like, you know, you, for every 10,000 good people, you know, you have that one bad egg that does a mass shooting or something like that. It's like, yeah, I don't, I just don't want to get caught slipping in most cases because, yeah. you know, you never know. And I probably get that from my father. He's, you know, life member NRA. He's, I said, I grew up kind of shooting firearms, learning how to respect them and, you know, cleaning guns every time you shoot, you know, 
field stripping everything we have, you know, just kind of like Legos just going over that. Yeah. It was a good bonding experience, but. Well, uh, I got a buddy over at SIG and he wanted me to, he got super excited that you were coming on the show. Uh-huh. And uh, he's into this, he's into the hacking stuff too. His name's Jason. He wanted me to show you this. Uh huh. I think he's got something very similar to send you. There's a business card in there. Don't show it on the camera, but. No way. Yeah, man. So go ahead, hold it up. So that's the newest SIG P365. Uh Uh-huh. It's got an optic on it. Oops, I'm having problems. All good, man. (laughs) There we go. There you go. I cleared and saved it already. But, um... But yeah, so that's the updated version. That's like the, I mean, in my opinion, that's the that is the <laughs> best carry gun on the market now. What's so nuts is I think my buddy just bought one of these. Did he really? Yeah, we shot it in Florida. I was just down there. Like, that is so crazy. So they designed the gun, the weapon around the magazine. So I think it holds 17 rounds plus one, 18 rounds. That's more than, I mean, that's a subcompact. A compact yeah. will hold 15 Yep. You know, and so they've really innovated the subcompact market. That's sick. And then they got an optic up there. There's actually an updated optic that they just came out with now. So when you get in touch with Jason, make sure you let him know you want that updated optic. Should if, I uh, pocket this, the, the business card then? I would if I was you. Okay. Done, done. <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome. But, but yeah, that's, that's my ADC. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. A little bit more boring than yours, but not at all. <clears throat> That's all right. Real ultimate power. Perfect well, stuff. let's get on with the episode. You ready? Let's do it. Hey, everybody. I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.